Hi, I'm George, the Benton Guy, and today I'd like to give you a brief overview of how I personalize my fishing kayak crate. Anyway, before I start, I do want to acknowledge that I'm fairly new to kayak fishing. Uh, I've only been using kayak fishing for about four years. Uh, I've been fishing all my life. Uh, actually, I hate to say this, but for oh, six decades. It's a long time. But anyway, my daughter, son-in-law, granddaughter, grandson got four kayaks about six years ago. And they really introduced me to kayaking, uh, recreational kayaking first. In fact, my first experience really in a kayak of any, spending any time at all was when my daughter and son-in-law invited me to join them on an excursion on the Namakaukan River. We went 12 miles and I had a blast. Um, shortly thereafter, my daughter and grandson really got me into kayak fishing. And since then, particularly with the pandemic, my grandson and I have been fishing, kayak fishing all summer, at least once a week, sometimes more. And uh, I'll tell you, I've just been hooked on it. It's just been great. Okay, here's my crate. I built this really following a video that Heath put out on YouTube, and I'll include a link in the description here. It's basically two kayak crates, and let me show you here. I cut off the bottom of one part of the crate and then made that as a lid. And then, in addition to that, I added a floor because my things kept falling through the cracks in the bottom of the kayak crate. This is a Sterlite crate and it really has not as heavy duty as I'd like. And what I plan to do now is build another one. And this one will be built using one that I'd get from Home Depot, a little heavier duty. Anyway, uh, this is what it is. Again, the lid. And then I included a cargo net. This is a motorcycle cargo net. And this is what Jack recommended from Mac, uh, Yak Motley. And it works great. Down below here, you'll see a, this device here is actually a, a bottle holder. And this is something my grandson Tyler designed and printed on his 3D printer. Okay, on the side here, and I just added this, I added rod holders for two rods. Now, one of the things I noticed that many of the rod holders you can buy that attach to crates are designed for spinning rods. They're like this, they have one slot and they, they drop in fine. Now, bait casting reels, if you drop a bait casting reel, they just spin. They don't really stay in place very well. So what I did is I built one that is notched out for the reel. And this is very similar to one that was put out by uh, uh, one of the other folks on YouTube. But again, I will, I will put that on, on uh, the link below. Uh, the thing is, his was a little bit different. I contoured mine so it fits snugly. One of the other things that, that my grandson and I do occasionally is we musky fish. Now when we go out, we fish for everything. We fish for bass, musky, northern, whatever we happen to have the uh, um, interest in that particular day. And musky rods don't fit well in these other holders because again, because of the, uh, the size and the shape of the, the reel. So what I did is I built a removable rack. And this is one that uh, is just held in by wing nuts. And so when I go musky fishing, my musky, musky rod will drop in here. And uh, when I'm not musky fishing, I just pull it off. So it's just really convenient. And you notice that I had these, all the rod holders offset. This is offset using a piece of one by four poly trim board. Again, it doesn't warp or anything and it works great. And I'm gonna put another video up there in, in uh, probably the next week or so, showing how I built those. Again, they're easy to build. And I wanna build them now so I can mount them on the crates from Home Depot. So it'll be a little bit heavier duty. Right now what I have to do is I had to put a backing in each of these holes. And I put the backing using a material of leftovers from, from a deck trim board. Okay, back here then, I have a holder for my safety flag. And again, my grandson and I made those as well. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like in just a few minutes. But anyway, this works great. And again, the crate, the holders are offset so they don't interfere with your opening and closing of the crate. Okay, what I'd like to do is just demonstrate how these rod holders work. So I have 
the, sp the spinning rod holder, you can see this is notched out so it fits in nicely. And that included a uh, tarp, a tarp uh, bungee that just goes over the handle and this holds it in place. Now, this fits nicely. Now my bait caster, uh, which I have to say is actually my grandson Tyler's bait caster, his, uh, his, uh, his old one, uh, loaned it to me this year because I haven't used a bait caster in probably 40 years. Anyway, and again, this fits in nicely. It's notched in back and in front, and this holds it in place, so you don't have to worry about it flopping around. And again, I just throw the bungee over here, and have to, have to worry about it falling out. Works great. But now again, if I show you, if you put this in this title holder, you can see this is the standard one you can buy in uh, uh, most places like Yak Attack and, and uh, Berkeley and some of those others have that feature. But if I try to open and close this and this flops around, it's going to interfere. That's why, again, I notched it out so it's, it's really secure. You don't have to worry about it flopping around at all. Now, the same holds through with a musky rod. Uh, it's a little bit longer. It fits in there nicely with that extra long rod but unfortunately uh, <laughs> because my ceiling height I'm not gonna be able to really demonstrate it but I think you get the idea here I'm just gonna tip this slightly maybe to get it in uh, maybe not I guess I can't get it in but anyway, uh, it will drop in here just like the other, but you've noticed uh, this larger, so it fits this long handle. I'd well, next like to show you how I mounted the safety flag. Again, uh, I just had some blocks of leftover decking, and I also then put two blocks of, of the one by four, actually this is cut down to one by two, or one by one and a half um, piece of trim board and I put a set screw in. Now because this is a plastic, all I had to do is drill a smaller hole and then just self-thread it in. But this drops in place and locks. And it works fairly well. And I have to say that it stays pretty, pretty stable in there. I'm just gonna pan up here just a second and just show you how that's, uh, how that's secured. But um, anyway, uh, it works fairly well. My grandson designed and printed a holder for this, it's similar to this, but it's, it's made out of a, of a flexible plastic. And I'll show you a little piece of it in a bit. That works very well. Unfortunately, we found out that when you're bait casting uh, and you're not careful, uh, you can catch the flag. And he, the first night out with the flag with the lights on, he caught it with his rod, cast it, and pulled it out of the holder, and it dumped it in Indian Lake in Dade County. So uh, since then, we've added flotation. Okay, this is the safety light that we built for our, our warning flags. And this plastic piece here is something that my grandson printed from his 3D printer. He designed and printed it. And it has a small hole in the bottom here that allow you to insert that on the flag. Uh, it works great. It's designed with a little flex. You can see the flexibility there. Uh, and it's set so you can take a standard flashlight you could buy from most stores and it'll slide in and it works great. This piece up here that, that uh, uh, on the light is basically an old toothbrush holder. It's one that my wife and I bought when we first got married so it's, it's almost 48 years old. But it's great, it just slides on, uh, it friction fits, but then I threw on a little piece of electric tape just to be safe so we wouldn't lose it. Okay, this is a little closer look at the safety flag. As I mentioned before, this device that my grandson designed and built has a small hole in the bottom and it friction fits in at the end, on the end of the, of the flag. And in the center of the holder is a hole so you can reach in and turn on the flashlight. The flag itself is made out of polyester, so if it gets wet, and of course if you're in a kayak, everything gets wet. Uh, she put a piece of plastic coat hanger to give the flag rigidity so it always stay open. It, it works really well. This particular flag is held in place by two pieces of 
deck cladding. And what I used is a one inch hole saw and cut out a piece. And then I added a set screw to hold it in place. It works well. Uh, it's probably not what I'd use next time. And then for the flotation, again, the flotation is nothing more than uh, a three quarter inch insulation, pipe insulation. And this is something that my son-in-law and grandson recommended. And I did test it in the bathtub, so it does work. And then on top of that, I have a stainless steel washer on both ends. And then on the other end here, instead of using the deck uh, cladding, I use a 5 16 inch uh, shaft collar, and that works great. It has a set screw, it's a lot more convenient. And I do plan on, on putting together a video showing how this is actually made. I did want to show you that this cup, cup holder is very functional. Again, this is one of my favorite beers, the Nuclear Spotted Cow. Uh, it can't be beat. Uh, those of you that live out of Wisconsin won't be able to get it though. This holder is big enough that a bottle will fit in, a can, an even bottle with a insulator on it. It, wor it works great. One of the things I wanted to pass on to is that um, is the safety. My grandson and I were out on Lake Wabisa. Yeah, it's one of the, the Madison lakes. Uh, there's a chain of lakes in Madison, Wisconsin. This is one of them. It's a large lake. And we had a great time. We caught some nice, uh, nice bass, uh, a few northerns. Uh, it was just a, a good day. Unfortunately, we were about a mile away from our landing where we have our boat, our, our car, and the wind picked up. And we noticed that some of the boaters were out in the water were not really paying as much attention because they were just trying to get back to shore and get to areas where there wasn't as much wind. But we got caught. And one of the things I want to stress is that even when you don't think you need, need the safety flag, it's important to have it. The other thing I wanted to mention is the stress, and, and most of the good, good kayakers out there on YouTube will say the same thing. Wear your personal flotation device. It's so important. And I'll be honest with you, um, I've been a, a great swimmer all my life. My grandson's a great swimmer. And we tend not to wear them because, you know, it seems like it's hot. And it's just inconvenient. So I had the, the life jacket stuck behind my seat. It's accessible, yeah. But if I got swamped from another boat, getting at that would be tough. And with all the wind, my guess is that my kayak would be blowing further enough away from me that it wouldn't be real accessible if I got blown up or got tipped over. Anyway, I was going to try to put it on, but the water there was so rough when we got caught out there that I couldn't get it on. Since then, I've been wearing an inflatable jacket all the time. Uh, it's, it's convenient. It's not too, too uh, bulky. Uh, it works fine. My concern is not that something would happen to me, because I've got a few miles on me, so if something happened, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, I, I couldn't think of a better way to go. Drowning, kayak fishing, there's worse ways to go. My concern is my grandson. He's 16 years old, and I'm concerned that he would go out there and try to save me. He's a great kid, and I know that's what he's gonna do. I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. So I'm wearing my jacket, not necessarily for me, but for him. Uh, and my family. So I stress, really want to stress that uh, if you're out in the water in a kayak, please, please, please wear a personal flotation device. So what's next? Uh, my grandson and I are going to be doing a little work this year. Uh, he's going to be designing some new brackets, a new uh, soda holder that's made out of a more flexible brass plastic product coming out. The other thing is too, is going to be adding a new device to hold the flag. And again, one that has a set screw in it, but it'll fit in the kayak crates like you would buy from Home Depot or Yak Gear, a really good heavy duty one. Uh, this has been a good crate, but it's very, very light. Uh, so I wanna try it with the others. And once we get the other crates, then I'll have these pre-drilled so they'll fit on any Home Depot crate. Anyway, that's what I have for now, but uh, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comment below. Thank you.